Hey, this is just a follow-up from the last video. I put out a uh, some examples of where I'm using astrophotography tool and the half-flux diameter along with a hyperbolic curve fit to find or identify the optimal focus for a given filter. And I use a different program as part of just the work I, I do at work, uh, but this could be done in Excel as well. And so I worked up a little application here a little Excel spreadsheet that does this. I just wanted to walk you through it and then I'll put a link up to this spreadsheet on the Google Drive that you can access. That link will be uh, in the description, I imagine. Uh, but this is an overview of the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet relies on the add-in, the solver add-in. So chances are you don't have that installed. This is what you would do to load it in. Go to File, go to Options, and then go to add-ins and then you'll see solver add-in just say OK and that will install it okay so let's pick up with an example as if we have been out imaging already we're just want to set focus for the next filter or after some temperature change we just want to change the focus we already have some data that's that was in the table from the last time we focused but now we want to refocus so for example what I would come in and do is wherever I am in my focus I would I would want to ensure that I have a star that's not saturated when it's most in focus and or find a star that that isn't saturated there'll be plenty to choose from I imagine and then I would type in a value about for me I tend to use about 300 to 400 steps uh, out of focus from what I consider to be nearly in focus and so I would type in a number here let's call it uh, 5100 and if I'm taking steps, as you'll notice when I've changed that, th these numbers in here changed as well. And maybe I'm taking focuser steps at minus 50, meaning I'm starting by moving the focuser out to step 5100, and then I'm going to step through focuser positions moving back in, which means I'm using a negative number here. And I think this would work if it's a positive number, so you decide how you want to handle it. And so now I've changed negative 50, so you can see all the focus or positions are in here at minus 50 increments. Now these numbers may not mean anything, won't mean anything if you're coming from having focus previously. And so these numbers are different. However, I'm going to just pretend that we're typing these in. So I go to this focus or position, do a short exposure to get the, uh, to get the picture at this focus or position, and using, in my case, the astrophotography tools half flux diameter measurement utility, the focus aid, I get this number. It just gives me this number and then I type it in here and then I move the focuser in 50 steps, take a picture. Now hopefully the the image has not shifted and so the focus aid is still in place and it's just looking at the same star. It'll instantly read out what the half flux diameter is there, move the focuser in another 50 steps by pressing the button that you have set the increment to at 50 and take a picture and get this value of the half flux diameter and just repeat this process until you filled out this table and kind of what you want to do uh, to get a decent curve fit is to make sure that you go through the minimum you don't care you're not trying to find the minimum yourself right now you just go through the minimum and come back up to a maximum that's more or less the same order of magnitude as where you started so that you you do have curves that form this uh, hyperbolic shape to it now as you're filling this in what's happening over here is probably nothing <laughs> it's going to be using this what's the equation that's in this field here is this equation up here and all it's doing is taking the focuser positions that are in this table which is the position here it's subtracting C, which is this number, squared, divided by this number, squared, adds 1, takes the square root, multiplies by this number, and then adds this number, and then that's the number that's in this fit column. So as you're typing in numbers here, this is not going to change. What will change is the error. The error is the difference between the curve fit and the actual numbers you're typing in, but you'll notice that I'm doing that and then dividing by the uh, number that you just measured, just kind of normalizing the error and squaring because we want a positive number. So squaring it makes it a positive number. And we want uh, to do that for every pair of data and fit. 
And then what we're ultimately going to do with our solver uh, add-in is to minimize the error, and the total error is the sum of all of the errors that you have here, so that's this number. So the solver is minimizing that number, not making it zero, but minimizing that number by changing these numbers so that you have a curve that looks fairly, that is a hyper a hyperbola but it fits the data as well as possible by minimizing that error so now once you've entered in all the numbers you're gonna have something that looks like this the data will be over here the last curve fit you did will be up here and now we need to to actually execute the solver to find the new set of parameters that make this curve look like or fit most closely the data you just typed in and we go up here to data solver all the numbers are filled in if you've used it before. If they're not, use these, use this picture, a screenshot over here to fill in these numbers and fields here. And they say solve. And now you can see that it's found a set of parameters up here that minimizes this number here and therefore leaves you with a hyperbola that is as close to the data as it can fit. And once you do that, then the parameter C in here is the optimum focus position, which is also repeated up here as the optimum focus position of 4821. Now you go back to your focuser, tell it to go to step position 4821, and then you start with your start back up with your imaging. I've been using this, and it's it's working pretty well. Uh, I haven't had any issues, and certainly when I when I do take the pictures, I I do get. Uh, what appear to be in focus stars so it does appear to work uh, it is not obviously automated there's a lot of work that you're going to have to do but it is fairly quick and it certainly beats having to go off target to slew to a fun to find a a brighter star and then go out put a batten off mask on then go through the same number of exposures and adjustments of the of the focus or position to find critical focus then slew back to the target to to start imaging again Anyway, you might try this thing out and see if it works for you. I hope you find it useful. We'll see you later.